don't need to do anything more, right? Exactly. Okay. Well, uh, very good morning, uh, uh, colleagues. Uh, I wanted to say good morning from sunny Zagreb, but it's not sunny anymore. It, it seems that it's going to, to rain a little bit later. But nevertheless, a very good morning. Uh, I, I think we have a great topic today. Uh, we, we, we are going to do that from three points, from uh, Brussels, of course, uh, where we have uh, uh, colleagues and participants from EASME. Uh, I'm very happy that today we are going to have uh, Christoph Millin, and, uh, or actually only him, uh, from EASME. Uh, then, then we are going to have uh, Roberta Casapietra from Ire Liguria, from Italy. And at the end, uh, I'm going to give you uh, some, some information about our experiences in Croatia. Uh, at the end, uh, we are going to touch upon uh, integrated home renovation service. So the, the whole webinar will, will cover two topics, PDA and uh, home, home renovation service, which we hope it's going to be most interesting for you. Uh, once again, very good morning. And on behalf of Federen and Manage Energy, uh, we, we would like to, to, to wish you a uh, inspiring session today uh, so so feel free uh, to to share some of your reactions even even later feel free to to, to in, in in the email or, or on, on whatever uh, uh, way you would like uh, you can share uh, your 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 projects ask questions uh, now or later and and we would be happy to, to give you the best answer we can uh, I think it's it's we can we can proceed to very uh, uh, we, we 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 can continue with Christoph uh, uh, Christoph Millin of course from EASME, uh, the right person to give you to give you, to give us introduction in PDA Christoph good morning hello hello good morning uh, can you hear me correctly yeah beautiful yeah. thank you okay and so shall I share my screen with you it would be um, great yes yeah probably <laughs> <laughs> and um, you can you can share both your camera and the screen if you wish yeah i think okay. for the screen is fine even better probably and for the camera can you see me yeah good 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 so uh, good morning. Uh, thanks again for, for the invitation. Thanks uh, for the uh, participants in this webinar discussing <coughs> a European initiatives to support financing of energy efficiency. So I will give a first uh, speaking points on the project development assistance. We will have a break with a few examples and then I will come back also with uh, uh, some speaking points on integrating home renovation services. Um, so my, my colleague uh, Martin Abel uh, could not make it this morning, so I will do both parts. Uh, and starting with PDA, I just wanted at an introduction to remind some of the order of magnitudes that we are talking about. Just to mention that uh, in preparation for the revised energy efficiency directive, the Commission uh, did some excellent analysis and evaluation of the investment required to reach uh, the targets that uh, we, um, we, we have for 2030. Excuse me, I'm, I'm sorry yeah. for interruption, Christoph. Uh, I cannot see the whole screen, uh, 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 the whole slide, so, uh, okay. so maybe we can adjust it. Uh, Philippe is I... managing it. Okay. Uh, if I close this, maybe not. <laughs> Okay, uh, and if I do, and this also, is it good now? Do you maybe you still, yeah, probably good now. Is yeah. it not yet for me? Hmm. Ah, shit. Why? Or maybe on the other screen? Why that? Yeah. So, so while we we are fixing this, just to mention that we we're definitely speaking 
about large amount of investment to be uh, to be uh, mobilized each year to reach our 2030 targets. Uh, the evaluation, the order of magnitude is around 100 billion euros per year uh, between the period 2020 to 2030 uh, to be invested in addition to what is already foreseen to be invested in, uh, in the building sector. Uh, so that means a very large amount of investment needed and uh, for the larger part of it, uh, it will be on uh, it will be the financial burden will be will have to be carried out by the private sector uh, meaning like that businesses but in particular by uh, households we saw in the figure just before uh, that the largest amount of investment to be mobilized in uh, buildings refurbishment is in the res residential sectors and, and so we need to find ways to uh, trigger this investment by uh, by households uh, i don't know if now you can see the full uh, PowerPoint, is that okay? Can not not just... really, no. Just a minute, I'm coming. Okay, well, I, I will follow with just half of the PowerPoint and maybe you miss uh, the nice picture that was on the side. Um, so, in addition to what I've just said, the amount of investment is very large. Uh, it has to be carried out by the private sector mainly. Uh, uh, because clearly, speaking of this amount of investment, where subsidies are not at scale, uh, we don't have enough uh, public money to reach these amounts of investment. And, um, and even if uh, there is subsidies, they are sometimes perceived as carbon sum. Uh, if subsidies exist, uh, in most cases, and, uh, they will have to be pre-financed. That means that uh, you will receive the amount of the subsidy just after the investment is done and you will still have to find ways to uh, cover the full investment and, um, and find so a financial instrument to allow you for that. Uh, and uh, at the moment, there is a lack of such uh, attractive financing project from the market uh, corresponding to the specifics of uh, energy efficiency investments. So, in uh, one of the uh, communication from the European Commission, we define three pillars of intervention uh, with the idea to, on one side, uh, make more effective use of public fund, meaning by that that the amount of public money available is too uh, small to cover the investment need that uh, we've just uh, mentioned before, and we need to make the best use of this uh, public money to trigger also private investment. Uh, on this, um, Second pillar of intervention is on uh, technical assistance and uh, aggregation of project, uh, meaning that in many cases the project of energy efficiency refurbishment in building and in particularly in the residential sector are too small to be visible from uh, the financial uh, investor perspective. And so there, there is a need to, to create uh, intermediates and uh, aggregate project in order to reach a critical size and become visible and interesting from uh, an investor perspective. So we do have a number of things and most of the rest of my presentation will go uh, in, this, uh, in this direction. Uh, on a third pillar of intervention that we have, and I will not uh, elaborate much on that today, is on de-risking, meaning uh, facilitate the understanding of energy efficiency investment particularities uh, by, uh, by investors and lowering the perceived risks uh, for, for this type of investment by, uh, by investors. So if I go on presenting project development assistance, uh, so it's open uh, this year and it will be also open next year. And the point is to build technical, economic and legal expertise uh, needed for project uh, development. So to create some kind of project development unit that will be able to identify potential project, aggregate this project, um, and, and possibly launch uh, joint tenders procedures to uh, again reach this idea of critical size and, uh, and, uh, and play with economies of scales in order to, to attract uh, investment. Um, we, we expect project to develop some kind of organizational innovations and minimize transaction cost. Uh, in this topic, the term innovation shouldn't be um, scaring. I mean, uh, innovation is um, 
is, uh, is always evaluated in the proposal particular context. That means that even if you think that some uh, of approaches can be considered as a common practices in a, a given member state or in a given region, that can still be very innovative in other contexts. So, all, in all cases, we will ask evaluators to uh, evaluate the innovation of, of the project in the particular con context and for uh, the evaluator to clearly understand uh, what is uh, your context, you, you, you should in all proposal uh, very well describe where you're starting from, uh, what is your context, what is your rationale, and, uh, and therefore uh, help the evaluator understand the innovative aspect of, um, of your proposal. Also, you should know that there are a number of uh, practices already existing, so you should uh, study the state of the art and, uh, and demonstrate your knowledge of this uh, state of the art and explain how you will use that also as a, as a starting point to develop your own experience. But don't be too afraid of this uh, innovation aspect because, again, it will be always uh, evaluated in new particular context. Uh, in terms of uh, best practices, you can have a look at the City Invest project where they did a, a review of potential financing scheme. You can find quite interesting elements in this, um, in this project that is now over. You have the Innovate project uh, dealing with a uh, one-stop shop in the in the residential sector that can also give you a good idea of uh, existing experiences and uh, and things that you could be copying. Um, there is a GRC review also on one-stop shop that could uh, also give you quite some ideas on on what you could uh, develop in your particular context. So every every proposal will be evaluated in its particular context, but what we also expect from the proposal is a high degree of uh, replicability. So you will conduct your own experience, but we expect you to communicate and share uh, the knowledge that you've gained uh, in order for others to possibly replicate your, um, your experience. Uh, also on the way, when you are uh, working on your particular experience, you will face a number of constraints of uh, legal, administrative, or other market barriers. Um, and uh, in that case, we expect the proposal to clearly identify uh, the buyers that they face, uh, to work on a possible solution, or even better, to propose this solution, or even better, to pass this, uh, this solution, so to allow also other experiences to develop and grow. Uh, the core idea around this PDA is to aggregate projects. There are different ways to do that. You can either uh, aggregate different uh, small projects under the same ownership. So, for example, working with, for a large municipality or region, you could identify a number of buildings within this uh, big municipality or region and pull them together in a joint effort to tender then uh, for example, for in order to, to, to launch an energy performance contract. Um, you can also consider the possibility of bundling project, meaning identifying project in different, uh, owned by different entities. For example, working at regional level, uh, identifying project that belongs to municipalities and supporting the municipalities, grouping their buildings in order again to reach the critical size and, and play with economies of scales um, and, um, and launch a joint procedure in order to attract again uh, investment. Um, one of the idea would be also in this uh, topic to find ways to mobilize private finance, uh, which is something we, we do expect, but is not a, a requirement as such, uh, because you can still consider different ways to finance your, uh, your investment. For example, in context where you do uh, still have um, structural funds, for example, available, the investment could partly or in large share be done with uh, the support of, um, of structural, fund, structural funds, for example. Uh, regarding the main features and the project development assistance, uh, the scope is quite broad, so different uh, from uh, what I will later present with uh, home renovation. Uh, here you can target not only the residential sector, but also 
social housing, public and uh, public buildings, and possibly private buildings in the tertiary sector. You can even target small industry and services, um, urban transport, but in this case mainly meaning uh, mobility services, and you can also work on uh, existing infrastructures. Street lighting is still a possibility, even though you will have to explain how it, um, in this case, uh, how, how, how it improved to, to, to current practices. And uh, you can also target water and wastewater services. Uh, <clears throat> one specific feature under uh, project development assistance is that uh, we actually expect invest investment uh, to be launched before the end of the action. So we we um, we, we we really uh, insist on that, and there is even uh, a clause in your grant agreement that for each uh, euro received in technical assistance, you should have triggered 15 euros. Uh, of investment in energy efficiency refurbishment. Uh, there are different ways to prove that uh, investments have been launched. You could uh, indeed invest uh, and, uh, and uh, conduct the refurbishment within uh, the project duration. We could also consider that the contract that was signed during the project duration, even though the actual refurbishment takes place after the project ends, uh, is still considered as an investment trigger by the initiative. And we even, in some cases, and in discussion with your project advisor, can consider that a tender that is launched within uh, the project duration uh, is uh, proof, uh, sufficient proof of investment as long as the tender cannot be uh, withdrawn. So there are different ways and uh, to, to prove that the investment uh, was launched before the end of the action, but uh, in any case, we will ask some proof of investments uh, as a result of, um, of the action. Uh, one particularity of this topic uh, compared especially to the rest of the Horizon 2020 program is that in this particular topic there is a possibility for one single entity to present a proposal on its own. So uh, differently from other uh, 2020 projects, you do not need to uh, build a consortium with three different legal entities from three different countries, no. In this case, just one single entity working at local level can present a proposal and be eligible. Uh, that's for being eligible, but to be uh, convincing and to be selected by uh, by the evaluator, you need obviously to prove that you have all the required uh, skills to, to conduct the action. And in a case, um, and in many cases, you may consider the possibility to still build a consortium, but at, at local level, in order to have all um, all the required uh, skills to to conduct what you propose to to do. Uh, so the EU, EU contribution can cover 100% of the eligible costs, and there is for this year 2019 six uh, million available. The so deadline will be on September this uh, this year. Uh, and what is important is that uh, pro the, the topic will continue uh, next year in 2020. So there will be another opportunity also next year. Um, uh, I, I mentioned that because it is not the case for integrated home innovation services. I will uh, present it uh, later. Uh, so I, to co yeah, sorry. Can I ask a, a, a question, Christoph? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so you said the, the budget for this year is uh, 6 million euros. Uh, would it be okay to, to ask how many projects you expect? Is it like 10 projects or, or 5 to 10 projects? Or is it still is it a stupid question or not? No, no, no. <laughs> uh, it really depends on your, on your level of uh, ambitions and, and what you, you, you propose to do. Uh, but on average, we'll say that uh, a project would be uh, above 500,000 euro, probably because below that it's uh, it's maybe a, an overkill to 
get into the complexity of um, of this Horizon 2020 project. So above half a million and up to 1.5 million. So the project would be in the range between 0 0.5 to 1.5 million. Uh, this is indicative. It's not a requirement, but this is more or less what we we expect. And so with that, you 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 see that we can have a four to six uh, project. Uh, probably selected uh, selected this year. Is that uh, answering your question? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so just to, to conclude, uh, before having more examples with uh, the rest of the presenters, I can mention two projects that were uh, selected uh, under this, uh, this specific uh, project development assistance. Uh, one which is completed and took place in the Piemont, Piemont region in uh, Italy uh, called 2020 Together. It was actually selected under the Intelligent Energy Europe program, but the features were more or less the same as in uh, project development assistance. And here, as uh, they did conduct um, uh, an, active, an action to uh, aggregate project and launch uh, joint uh, procedures. So they work at the regional level, at the Piedmont region, uh, and identify uh, different types of investment in the city of Torino with a large, of, uh, large investment regarding the heating systems from uh, uh, the buildings owned by the city of Torino. They also worked uh, with uh, the municipalities in the region of Torino, identifying buildings in the in the region, in the municipalities, and um, uh, conducting the first study diagnosis, aggregating the the the, the, the different buildings to make uh, it sizable, and then joint uh, launch a joint uh, procurement for uh, energy performance contract. So they did a tender and award a framework contract with uh, an energy service company. And then there was bilateral contract with each uh, municipal uh, municipalities to actually refurbish the exact uh, buildings in the Piedmont region. There was a third party financing uh, involved in, uh, provided by, uh, by the ESCO, uh, and with a very high uh, replication pro uh, potential. So they did communicate, and they are actually still communicate quite a lot on uh, their scheme and how they, they proceeded, and, um, and, um, and help also other uh, municipalities and regions develop their own uh, experiences. Uh, more or less on the same approach, the Rodoshop project, which is in Bulgaria, it's actually a follow-up of the City Invest project that I've mentioned. In there, the City Invest, they, they, uh, they review and um, analyze different schemes possible to, uh, to conduct refurbishment of uh, public buildings. And as a follow-up of this first initiative and first effort to, to understand the different possibilities, uh, Rodoshop region, uh, Rodop region in uh, in Bulgaria, which is kind of a rural area in the south of, of Bulgaria, uh, proposed and was awarded uh, the Rodoshop project, where they do set up a one-stop shop, a project development unit that um, that uh, collect all the skills needed to identify build, uh, buildings, to conduct the first analysis and launch uh, joint procurement in order again to uh, to sign energy performance contract with a high level of uh, replicability. They actually build on the experience from uh, Renault Watt in uh, Belgium. Uh, they learned under the City Invest project from the Renault Watt and they are now trying to apply the Renault Watt concept in uh, in Bulgaria. And uh, we expect them also to communicate on uh, on what they have done and uh, what can be applicable, especially in uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, I will finish for my part of the presentation. I, I don't know if we take question and answer now. Uh, I think so. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Do, do we have a question? Hello? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, Patrick speaking in Auvergne Rhône Alpes. So thank you very much for this very uh, comprehensive uh, presentation. Um, I just have uh, two quick questions. Um, so we are in the process of developing um, a project proposal 
about the energy refurbishment of uh, existing public buildings in uh, small and mid-sized uh, local authorities. And we have many of them in uh, Auvergne-Rhône-Alpes, more than 3,000. So we would like to combine uh, in this uh, proposal two uh, aspects. One is the innovation in terms of uh, implementation of the advanced services with local, uh, let's say, uh, one-stop shops uh, with the coordination at regional level. And the other aspect would be uh, to work on uh, innovative financing, such as white certificates. So my question would be, uh, Christophe, so would you recommend any uh, existing project uh, in particular that we could uh, have a look at uh, just to, you know, to uh, facilitate our understanding? And uh, the other question would be, um, if we have more, let's say, if we have more questions, would that be possible to send you some kind of, uh, you know, project idea that you could review or give us some insights? Thanks very much. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, what we cannot do is provide guidance on specific project ideas. So if you uh, send us a, a project uh, idea and, uh, and ask for a feedback, we, we won't be able to, to give you this, uh, this feedback. But what we can do is uh, answer specific uh, questions you may have on, uh, on the core requirements. So uh, at the end of my presentation, I, I will give the email of the functional mail, mailbox, mailbox for uh, easme energy at uh, ec.europa.eu where you can ask questions and, um, and, uh, and we will answer on the specific requirements from, uh, from the call so you can have a better idea of uh, what is expected, but we cannot provide exact uh, feedback on, on just a, a project idea. Okay. What we can do, what you can do, uh, is to look at the population of existing project development assistance projects, uh, and also I think with the support of uh, FEDAREN and other uh, actors, you can still find some reviews of what have already been done. I was mentioning the Innovate project, which has more targeting on uh, targeted to um, on on uh, residential sector, but you do have a review uh, published last year by the Joint Research Research Center on uh, on one stop shops uh, that can you give you also good ideas of what have been done in Europe already and 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 what are the possibilities for for one stop shop and um, obviously. Uh, I will give you also the links there. Uh, there is a number of examples that we showcase during the Sustainable Energy Investment Forums, which is an initiative we, we, we support, uh, and where we organize a number of events where we showcase uh, existing examples. And so you can find um, some of the projects that we, are, where we have been supported and a lot, lot of material. So I will give you uh, all the links to this, uh, to this project, but, uh, but we won't be able to give uh, uh, direct, uh, gu direct guidance. O on the way to uh, create, uh, so, sorry, uh, yeah. uh, on the way to create a project development unit and, and work on behalf of municipalities and help them aggregate um, aggregate uh, the different small project into a larger project, you will find a lot of uh, information in the material that uh, will be sent after the, the webinar. O on the possible use of white certificates to improve uh, the, 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 the rentability of the investment, I, I, I'm not so sure we do have examples. This is quite uh, more specific to the French context. Uh, and here, I, I, I'm afraid I won't have exact uh, example in mind. Yeah. Okay, thanks very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Just wanted to say that, well, after the, the webinar, all presentations and uh, all that useful information will be made available for, for all uh, interested participants. Am I, am I right? You're right. It, it will be on Federal and Manage Energy as well. And but I would like to add something that you can find quite a lot of um, uh, information on existing documents. I put the link uh, on the chat uh, up 
which is a hub, energy efficiency data hub. And if you, with a filter, if you click on innovative financing and the country you, tar you target, you have quite a, quite a lot of example and with the link or with the coordinators. So it could be useful if you want to see what happened in your country. Yes. Do, do we have more I, questions? I Yes, uh, I just wanted to uh, to discuss about the um, the term of aggregation, because in case of uh, small projects, very uh, many small projects, uh, aggregation is uh, in a, in one tender is very complicated in the French context, and uh, one other way is to group all these small projects to have one tender by project, but all the tender launched at the same time. So in one case, you have only one tender, but it's very complicated to set up this uh, big uh, common tender. On the other side, you have the possibility to, to, um, to have, uh, for example, 20 uh, identical uh, tenders that are launched at the same time. It's very easier to do in the French context, for example. And, but uh, yes, the, the question is just, in case we are uh, working on small projects, small municipalities, so pooling means for us uh, having the same uh, models of uh, tender and not grouping in the same tender. You understand? Yeah, but it's actually um, not a requirement huh, to 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 have all uh, the buildings in the same tender. Uh, it's just an idea of uh, aggregating project with the idea to play with economies of scales um, in terms of the skills needed. So to have, uh, instead of uh, requiring from each uh, municipality to have uh, skilled uh, employees able to identify the project, uh, uh, write and develop the documentation, then launch and tender, maybe for just one or two buildings that there are to, to, to refurbish in, in the municipality. So we cannot expect that from small, uh, small entities. And so there is an idea to to collect and to aggregate this expertise in a, in a project development unit, and and the idea behind aggregation is also to um, to, to make it uh, sizable in order for investors to understand or at least to make it attractive enough to spend time on developing a potential uh, potential offer. So there, there there are two ways, let's say, to to um, to make it interesting for uh, for investors, uh, either by uh, increasing the size of uh, the project, so bundling different uh, buildings under the same uh, tender, for example. This is one possible way. Uh, because of the size, and there will be an interest in developing and, and spending time developing a, a specific offer for this, um, for this project. One other way, uh, as you mentioned, is maybe to, to standardize uh, the process and even if you launch uh, a large number of small tender, because they are all the same, uh, it's easy to still develop uh, and spend time uh, developing an offer because you will uh, be able to present this offer in a number of places. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But, oh, yeah. so the, the idea is uh, economies of scales. It's not, uh, yeah. we, we don't require to, be, to do big, uh, big tender. Okay, so in, in this uh, kind of things, uh, so to reach all these uh, small municipalities, we have more than 3,000 in Rhône-Alpes, which is a big region. And so we, we have to develop some uh, local um, advisory services or accompaniment services. And so the project is not only to renovate some buildings, but to set up this uh, local services that will be uh, in place after the project, that will remain after the project and uh, be used in the future for the other projects and so on. So the idea is on one side um, uh, uh, investment in uh, one, uh, I don't know how many projects, but in, in, in projects, but also to set up this uh, uh, network of uh, advisory services with the same me method, same uh, models, and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that, that's 
probably a, a good way to go. What we, we, we look for is, um, uh, I was mentioning the high level of replicability. So if uh, there, there is ways to, to communicate also on your approach and make it uh, possible in a, in a later stage, may, maybe for other municipalities to, to join the initiative even after the, the project is finished, that would certainly be um, a, a, a good feature in a, in a, in a project. So, so the, the possibility not only to, to operate while uh, there is a support from uh, the European project, but the, the possibility to, to still operate after the project is completed with uh, potentially other municipalities joining the initiative and what you will be um, should be mindful is uh, on, on presenting how uh, you ensure your uh, exploitation uh, exploitation of your uh, results in this sense we mean uh, how you will uh, continue to operate and develop maybe after the, the project is completed so what, what we would rather not like to see is uh, one of a kind uh, approach where we do operate for um, and spend a lot of effort developing uh, a, an initiative somewhere and then just after the project is completed then everything uh, everything stops that that would probably not be uh, very well perceived uh, you have to to think of the way uh, you will operate also after the project is um, is completed and potentially how you can grow after the, the project is completed Good. Thank you for the questions. We have, uh, at the moment, we have 38 participants from all around the Europe, which is which is very good to see. Good. If, do we have any other? Uh, but I would prefer a quick question. Something which would be applicable to to, to not just one particular project idea, but to 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 many participants. So last uh, question about the level of engagement of the uh, municipalities or the building owners in the, at the beginning of a project. Do we have uh, some engagement of all the, the project that will be included in the, in the PDA project or not? We need a list. We need a list, yes, an exact list, because at the, at the beginning it's very hard to, to know really how who, uh, which, which project will be inside. We know some of them, but not all. Uh, is, is there a percentage of engagement we need? What, what you need to, to do is to, um, to clearly be credible in, in what you are presenting. So if, uh, if uh, you're um, claiming a number of investment reach before the end of the action, there should be some kind of project pipeline uh, that is more or less in line with uh, this uh, level of investment that you claim to achieve before the end of the project. Obviously, the exact building under the, the portfolio uh, can later involve during the project. There are a number that will be replaced, but um, we, we have to, f to the, the evaluator when uh, when looking at your proposal uh, needs to uh, to understand that uh, it is credible and even if it moves a little, it, it, you can still reasonably achieve uh, the level of investment that you claim to achieve before the end of the project. Uh, also, what could help in order to uh, enhance your uh, credibility uh, is to work on, uh, on the partnership. Uh, for example, if you are uh, an association or a private company uh, claiming to refurbish public buildings, um, it will be much more credible if you do uh, present support from the municipalities you're claiming to to, to refurbish the buildings. Um, if you do not have uh, in your partnership any of the owners of the buildings that will be touched, for example, uh, then it, it it can be questioned whether or not you will be able to to motivate them during the project. So, so yeah, the the, 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 the main idea is to to be credible and and give as much proof as you can that you will reach investment before the, the end of the action. Okay, thank you very much. I think there will be time and, and opportunities for, for more questions later. And even after the webinar, I would like to, to invite now uh, Roberta from, from Liguria. 
to, to, to take the floor and to give us uh, their experience and to give uh, a an, an, an more detailed uh, uh, presentation of one of the uh, uh, projects for, for your inspiration. Yes, thank you, Yulia, for, um, for the floor. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. I think I will not share the, the camera because uh, the bandwidth is not uh, capable enough. So you will just hear my voice. Um, first of all, thank you very much for inviting us to showcase uh, our project, which is called Enershift. Uh, just a few, maybe I will put it full screen. Um, let me know if there are the same problems as with uh, Christoph's. Uh... Oh, very good. It's beautiful. Okay. Okay, just a few words about our company. It's uh, a, a public company owned by the regional government of Liguria and we are based in Genova. Um, it inherited the legacy of the formerly known uh, Are Liguria Energy Agency and we deal with urban regeneration, infrastructure development and uh, energy policies, of course. We are a member of FEDARAN. And uh, over the last few years, we've dealt with a few investment uh, aggregation uh, program within uh, ELENA and PDA, three of them overall. Uh, today, we are talking about the, the PDA project and a shift um, that we elaborated in 2015, and it's now ongoing. It was meant to, to last the three years, but we got a one year extension due to some delays that we um, accumulated um, because of the, the public tendering procedure, which is quite slow in Italy. The main aim of this project is the energy retrofitting of uh, public social housing buildings in our region. Overall, 76 uh, uh, buildings uh, where 3,000 uh, 3, uh, families live. Uh, we chose uh, the, the buildings uh, um, accord on the basis of the heating system. So we just uh, pick the, the buildings with a centralized heating system. Uh, and overall, we elaborated the program of 15 million uh, um, investments. Uh, to, to implement energy efficiency uh, through energy performance contract. We received the funding of about 1 million euro with the leverage of uh, 1 to 15. Um, and, and, and now let me just say a few words on, on why we decided to focus on social housing buildings. Um, the first issue is with energy performance of these buildings, very low due to the period when they were built in the 70s and in the 80s, um, either prefab or cavity walls, single glass and metal windows, so their performance is very bad. And um, the people living there often pay more for the energy bills than uh, for the rental fee itself, which is quite low. And, and anyhow, uh, most of them, many of them cannot afford the paying the bills and the rent. So there's a high default rate. And in that case, uh, the, the social housing operators normally pay, uh, pay themselves in place of the tenants. Uh, these buildings are a bit of a hybrid uh, situation because they are officially owned by the public and managed by these uh, social housing operators which are publicly owned, but the tenants uh, rent the, the apartments and pay for the bills themselves. Um, so we had also to figure um, how we could uh, um, apply the energy performance contract with people not actually owning the buildings. So uh, since the, the public the government didn't have the, the money to make the investment, but still the buildings needed um, interventions, we decided to apply for this project and to 
uh, try to use energy performance contract. Uh, the project partners are the social housing building operators. We have four of them uh, in our region, which are owned by the regional government. So the regional government is the coordinator of the project. And they also um, function as a, a public procurement for uh, all of the, all the tenders that we developed. Then, of course, it's us, the Regional uh, Energy Agency, as main technical partner of the project. And uh, this is our peculiarity. We have as partner the tenants syndicates um, uh, as, uh, let's say, representatives of the tenants. And they are those who should uh, uh, involve uh, uh, the people living in the, in the apartments and also raising awareness on energy efficiency overall. Uh, our proposal uh, planned to have to reach an average energy saving of about 50 percent, which was quite ambitious. Um, and this is uh, the, the, the structure of the project as we, uh, as we organized it with six um, work packages. And apart from uh, project management and communication, we have, uh, let's say, three technical work packages. Uh, the, the first one, WP2, is uh, focusing on the assessment phase. Uh, so the social housing operators were trained to deliver the energy audit of the buildings. And we here uh, prepared the, the baseline of all the uh, building's data and uh, characteristics. Then in WP3, we designed the sustainable investments. So we um, made uh, assumptions on the possible energy efficiency or renewable sources of energy interventions we could implement in uh, the buildings to figure the energy saving and the costs. So we developed uh, an overall plan um, and the technical and economic feasibility and the bankability features. And uh, in WP4, we developed the tender documentation, and launched the tenders uh, and uh, made a selection. We also have a specific uh, um, um, work package on community engagement, which we think is very valuable. Uh, because the people have to know what is going to be, uh, how the, the building, the other buildings are going to be transformed. Uh, I would just, uh, I'd like to already say, uh, to express a few of our suggestions on those people who are willing to prepare a project. Um, first of all, if you if your project deals with the public sector, make sure you plan uh, to have enough time to to talk to the people in the public sector because uh, our experience here is that uh, within municipalities and, and other public entities, there is no specific technical competence on energy efficiency nor on innovative. Uh, uh, pub, uh, financing schemes, so you need a, a long time to talk to public institutions and convince them, involve them, create the momentum. And then even when you have it, I suggest you to, to get a formal commitment to your proposal because what happens with, with time passing by from proposal to implementation, some uh, uh, public procure, uh, some public uh, entities, uh, specifically municipalities, they forget to to have uh, uh, given their um, uh, commitment uh, uh, to your project, and, and and some of the interventions uh, uh, disappear. So. Um, I suggest you to have a formal commitment at a, even uh, during the proposal phase to make sure that you don't lose the interventions. Then it is absolutely important to have a very good baseline, which means data collection. Sometimes this is very complicated uh, with small uh, public institutions. So please make sure you have time to do that and, uh, um, and, and, and the effort. Uh, to, to try and find this data. Um, and sometimes we need to make estimates because you will not get any data at all. 
Um, another tip is on, on leverage. Um, the, 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 the call requests to have 1 to 15 uh, leverage, but I suggest you to have a higher one, even at proposal phase, because in case um, things change from proposal to implementation, then uh, you might not uh, be um, you might not uh, be able to reach that leverage during implementation phase. And as you know, in in this PDA projects, uh, if you don't reach the leverage, you might be asked to uh, give uh, um, the contribution uh, back to ESME. So make sure you have a, a higher leverage to be on the safe side. Then I would also suggest to, um, to consider having a set of activities on market preparation, because uh, uh, in countries like, for instance, in Italy, where the EPC uh, energy performance contract is not so common in the public sector, the market may, may not be very mature and uh, you might fail uh, in your tendering process. So uh, it's better to have activities to prepare the market for your tender. Um, and then it is very important to work on the legal framework. So make sure you have uh, um, an expert on the, on the topic. At the moment, our project has finalized the technical activities and we um, are uh, still in the tendering process because we are still, as, you, as I will show, uh, we are still selecting uh, um, one contractor for a tender. Um, this uh, uh, slide um, summarizes uh, the overall structure of our tender, so how we intend to deliver um, the, the, the energy saving that we uh, planned to have. So uh, at the center you see uh, there is a tender for ESCOs. Uh, the tender has been launched by the main procurer, which is the regional government. And the signature is so the operators, uh, those uh, who are signing the signature, the, the, the contracts with the ESCOs are the social housing operators. Uh, the investments will be uh, paid mostly through private investments, so uh, ESCOs, uh, which uh, in turn uh, get money uh, or, or get some money from the banks. Then we managed to get some regional funds coming, coming from ERDF and also we considered the national funds coming from uh, incentive schemes that we have in Italy and that we call Conto Termico or the white uh, and, and green certificates. Uh, so overall the investments are a combination of uh, these, these three uh, financing sources. Uh, then we also um, as you see at the bottom of uh, the, the, the slide, we had two important, uh, let's say, facilities that helped uh, creating this function, uh, this structure. One is the stakeholders platform. It's a group of people meeting uh, at least twice a year uh, that discuss about facilitating energy performance contracting in Italy. And there you can find representatives from banks from uh, uh, ESCO's uh, association, uh, from uh, um, public uh, institutions, and also from the national ministries. Um, that group is very important to, uh, rep to promote uh, the replication of the project, but also to help the implementation of our project uh, uh, within the complex uh, network of laws and uh, financial um, problems coming from uh, um, the banks and other in, uh, financial institutions. And then we managed to make an amendment to the social housing regional law in order to be able uh, to use the, the, the APC system even with the tenants who do not own uh, the buildings uh, themselves. Um, in um, 2017, in August, we launched the first APC tender. 
That tender was organized in three lots. We had one main lot covering the buildings in Genoa. Uh, then we had uh, two small ones, very much smaller, because the idea was to favor SMEs to participate to uh, our tender. Um, the overall uh, uh, energy saving target was 45%. And uh, we, in our tender, uh, the services uh, was uh, named, um, um, let's say, in, um, in uh, as, as uh, the law, um, we, we named it the public service concession. Uh, and the service regard the energy saving, energy management of the buildings, supply of energy, um, uh, and that's it. Uh, we um, we had, uh, I mean, success for lot one, and then for lot two and three, we had uh, no offers. Uh, as for lot one, we received the three offers from uh, groupings of big companies, mostly multi-utility companies. Uh, the tender was won by Iren and Angie. It's a consortium of two uh, companies. One is Italian, Iren, and Angie uh, is French, and you might know it. The total value of the contract is about 16 million, and uh, the saving that they um, that they offered is a bit uh, bigger than the one that we indicated in, in the in our. Uh, tender document. Uh, so then, since the second uh, tender went uh, had no offers, we decided to uh, talk to um, those companies that uh, had made some uh, fields uh, analysis to the building. So which we thought they would uh, offer, uh, they would. Uh, uh, deliver an offer, but in the end they didn't. We talked to them and they said that either the two lots were too small or um, the margin was too low given uh, the, the request for energy saving that we had made. So we decided to make uh, some changes uh, like uh, um, joining the two lots uh, together uh, keeping the same amount of energy saving, but uh, giving more favorable conditions regarding to access to um, uh, national incentives. Um, we launched the, the, the tender in March 2018. This um, selection procedure is still ongoing, but I can tell you that we received one offer again from uh, um, one uh, grouping of, of big companies. Um, as I said before, we uh, managed to get uh, some ERDF funds from our regional government. And at the very beginning, we had hoped to be able to use them uh, either as a guarantee fund for the ESCOs or uh, to be able to contribute to the ESCO's fees directly. But uh, um, we didn't manage to get it, to get the, this, the, the, this use of ERDF because of the rules, uh, that the expenditure rules that we apply in Italy. The only way uh, to use them was uh, to to give this money uh, to public uh, entities and um, to use them in tenders for works. So the region decided to uh, allocate uh, that budget directly to the social housing operators, uh, which uh, identified I, um, other nine buildings on top of those involved in the APC tenders they found other nine buildings where to make deep energy renovation interventions, uh, which means uh, central heating, uh, heating system as well as isolation and uh, uh, glass uh, and windows and roofs. 
Um, so they already uh, made uh, uh, the tenders for works for a total of uh, five million investment uh, because uh, they put they, they had to uh, give some co-financing to the 3.5 ERDF money they received and these tenders have already been uh, carried out so uh, they are uh, starting to implement the works uh, let me finish. Yeah, I'm, I'm, being, I'm being very quickly, just one thing uh, to finalize uh, the tips. Um, the time that passes from proposal to implementation was six years in our case. Uh, maybe in your case is a bit less, but still is uh, a few years. So make sure, uh, I mean, just expect any possible change can happen in this uh, time. Uh, in this uh, length of time, uh, so you must be ready to expect uh, to, to, to handle any kind of uh, situation. Um, I'm skipping the last uh, slide because I think I'm late and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Roberta. Uh, it's uh, it's a great topic, obviously, and, and a lot of interest uh, from 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 everybody. Uh, we should we should uh, finish webinar by one o'clock. Uh, that's uh, one of the one of the uh, problems. Uh, and I'm going to be the next presenter. And well, it's now a challenge for me uh, to be quick, of course. Uh, and I'm going to share uh, one of our uh, projects with you. Uh, do we do, do do you see my 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 screen properly? Yep. yep. Okay. So 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 I'll make a full screen and uh, I I'll, I'll try to be quick in order to still have some time for the last presentation. Christoph has has the final presentation uh, uh, of today. Uh, Indeed, I, 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 this is why, why, why I'm here today. I, I really believe in PDA. It's a, it's a, it's a magic event that, that actually works. Uh, a, a great uh, uh, topic, and I think uh, uh, we should use it more. And this is why we have that, that, uh, uh, this, this webinar. Uh, we are going to, I'm going to tell you, uh, I'm going to tell you uh, one success story, uh, very briefly uh, uh, one oh, failing yeah. story, and then uh, uh, some some other uh, tips and tricks and and what we think uh, uh, from from Regea point of view. Uh, I don't, don't don't think we we need to. I need to to introduce Regea. We are a regional energy agency of uh, Northwest Croatia, active for 11 years. 33 members of staff, uh, 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 a lot of uh, experience in European projects. So my, my first uh, uh, project, uh, the, f the first project we did uh, was in, for, for the city of Zagreb. This is Zagreb by night, a beautiful city, of course, the most beautiful city in the world. But if you take a look at some uh, uh, figures, uh, it seems that we are not doing so well uh, compared with with other uh, European capital cities, so so this is a green city index uh, uh, the source for this. So if you compare CO2 energy uh, and an environment, we could do much better actually, and that was one of one of the uh, drivers for, for Zagi projects. Uh, the project was was uh, launched some time ago. Uh, we even wanted to submit it in in year 2011. Uh, at that point, that was really a novelty in Europe. Uh, so, so, so people in in the city of Zagreb were very suspicious about it, and we we, we actually we, we we were not successful to convince them at at first attempt to 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 submit a project. Actually. It, I, I, I needed to ask a colleague, a friend in, in European Commission to, to call them in the city and to encourage them to, 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 to agree on our proposal, which was uh, uh, quite strange, never mind. Uh, 
at the end, we success, successfully applied uh, for a project with two project partners. Uh, and all what we did was uh, based on a sustainable energy action plan for the city of Zagreb. And as Roberta said before, it's very useful to have a strategic uh, document behind and, and to, to build your project on a, on a solid base. Uh, we wanted to do something with public buildings and, and we wanted to open the to topic of street lighting, but the main uh, uh, actually uh, driver was to, to build the capacity of the city and to, to think what we can do in Croatia because we are in quite specific position here in Zagreb. Uh, uh, we are always an example uh, for, for the rest of the country. And that's one of the advantages and also disadvantages of, of uh, working uh, for a capital city. Uh, so some figures, as, as you can see, uh, about investment, uh, savings achieved and so on, which, might be interesting but but not 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 very very very, very crucial uh, we decided that uh, we are going to uh, focus on, on on different different types of public buildings uh, we wanted to test different financial instruments uh, we we wanted to go beyond minim minimal technical requ requirements in that respect uh, uh, zagi project our project was a real pioneering project and real pilot project for Croatia. Uh, at that point, we had a uh, quite limited, uh, 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 quite lim lim limited choice of, of possible financing. Uh, project actually started before Croatia uh, uh, officially entered the European Union. Uh, so, so no uh, structural funds were, were available, for example. Uh, no cohesion funds. Uh, uh, it was in the middle uh, of economic crisis in Croatia, which badly affected construction sector. So, so plenty of challenges uh, in front of the project themes. Uh, by 2017, uh, we managed to renovate uh, 41 buildings. Uh, we managed to to to, to do the. Uh, uh, more than 1,000 lightning posts, uh, which again served as a, as a pilot project. Nowadays, we are, we are in the middle of large-scale Elena project for the city of Zagreb, where, where we are uh, actually applying what we learned in Zagi on, on the whole, whole uh, street lighting system of the city of Zagreb. So, so that, that other Elena project is, is worth uh, around uh, the investment will be around 150 million euros, which is which is huge. Uh, so we used for financing, we used uh, what we could. Uh, uh, at that point, we had the opportunity to use National Environment Protection and Energy Efficiency Fund, which was good. Uh, again, uh, uh, I would say much more than, than uh, just investments. Uh, uh, the, the results uh, uh, were, were uh, uh, the, the most important results were uh, capacity building. So, so we did a lot of workshops uh, uh, for managers of buildings, for, for industry, and project results were, were intensively disseminated at leading national, national events, also to European events. But I think that lessons learned uh, on a national uh, level uh, uh, were, were particularly important. Uh, the, the, the true is that the Zagi project opened the door for uh, uh, energy efficiency in buildings uh, on a national scale and, and opened the door for energy renovation, uh, which we do now uh, within uh, uh, European, uh, uh, European funds. And uh, uh, I really think uh, Zagi projects uh, played an important role. Uh, some advices which we would like to, to, to share with colleagues uh, who, who think to, uh, uh, who would like to apply. Uh, 
so, so definitely we encourage them to, to, to consider PDA. Uh, uh, of course, as, as mentioned before, uh, available inventory uh, of buildings or whatever is the project about uh, and strategic documents, uh, uh, solid strategic document is important. Uh, political commit commitment and strong leadership uh, is important. It's always a question when, when you work together with public sector, uh, what is uh, uh, your role, what is their role, and, and you, you, better, you better clarify that, uh, uh, that at the beginning. Uh, in the ideal case, uh, it's a good idea to structure the project financially before signing the contract. And uh, of course, communication is, is uh, very important. I think we always like to, to, to finish all our, our slides with communication, communication, and communication. Uh, just just in, 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 in two minutes, uh, we, we did another application last year for the city of Karlovac. Again, a, a, a beautiful city, but we, 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 at the end, uh, uh, the project was uh, approved. In the negotiation phase uh, uh, last week, actually, it's still very fresh. Uh, the project was was uh, cancelled, uh, which, which is a pity, of course. But there are some very good lessons uh, which we learned, and I would like to, to share them with you. So instead of uh, uh, well uh, giving you some some numbers, the project was uh, uh, originally focused on buildings, uh, mobility, public lightning. Then, uh, uh, during the project uh, uh, negotiation, uh, the city wanted to add some sectors like district heating sector, uh, which might be a good idea. It would be much better to, 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 to uh, think about it on time before, of course. Uh, uh, they requested increase of total budget. Uh, the result was, was, in a way, expected. But what are the lessons learned? I wanted to share this one with you. Uh, when you when you work with with public administration, uh, apart from political will and political support, uh, you you should you should take into account the importance of middle management ownership. So so what hand, what what happened uh, in our case uh, after we submitted the project? Uh, head of uh, one of uh, head of uh, city units left, and then none of other heads of uh, units uh, in the city wanted to take the ownership of the project, and and uh, it was somebody else's baby, and 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 uh, that was that was a huge problem. So you wouldn't you wouldn't expect that from from rational point of view. What we've seen, at least in Croatia, it's still that uh, a big uh, reluctance to, to change business as usual. Uh, uh, PDA projects obviously had to be innovative, uh, as Christoph explained in many ways. Uh, uh, that, that change of, of uh, setting, uh, we always get that question, why do we need to be pioneers? Why do we need to, to, to be the first ones? Uh, uh, you should have that in mind when you when you speak to public sector. I believe not only not only in Croatia. Uh, we will of course uh, 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 continue to to to, so, to promote PDA as as a funding source for for public authorities. We we as Regea have some ideas in mind uh, for the next goal. Obviously. Uh, I think it's a great tool to, to, to introduce uh, all what was mentioned in the beginning, innovative financing, uh, uh, blending of, of European uh, uh, funding and, and private capital. But of course, uh, we will be more careful in designing of investment packages and, and we will take external influencing factors and risk uh, much more seriously than before. Uh, and, and my final comment, uh, uh, you might know that we, uh, we completed also one, one Elena project. We, we have now that another Elena project, which I mentioned for the city of Zagreb. Uh, so, so, so many times I got a question, can I compare PDA and Elena? 
uh, do, do we prefer one or another? Uh, we definitely see that there is, there is a place for both. Uh, there is significant need for technical assistance. Uh, I, it might be a good idea, maybe, so that, that's part of my suggestions for, for Erasmus, for Christoph, to think about uh, future development or maybe adaptation of support schemes according to, to, to real conditions, which are actually different in different parts of Europe. So we might maybe have, or at least think about regional PDAs in the, in the future. Uh, in any case, uh, uh, from, from Bregea point of view, uh, PDA definitely, uh, it's a good way uh, uh, how to structure your project, how to uh, send a signal uh, uh, to your uh, decision makers in, in public sector and that, that signal from Brussels uh, that the project is recognized and, and good always and, and very often makes, makes a change. Uh, uh, I was, I was uh, 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 trying to be very quick. Uh, uh, thank you very much for your attention. And now we still have some time for the final uh, presentation by Christoph. Christoph, uh, the floor is yours and I will be available for, for questions uh, after the meeting. I think uh, even my email and all the contacts are available. So I will be happy to, 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 to stay in touch with colleagues on, on PDA and our experience anytime. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I hope you can hear me. Uh, so uh, just as uh, you said, I mean, I, I will also, uh, not, not necessarily me, but uh, you have the possibility to ask questions even after this webinar is completed. I will give uh, the uh, uh, email of the functional mailbox where you can send uh, the, the, the questions. Uh, I hope you can see uh, my presentation. Is that okay? Yeah. That's good. Okay, uh, so I, I will now present uh, integrated home management services. I will do much faster than what I originally, originally planned, but if we don't have enough time for question and answers, again, there is a possibility to get in touch with us even after this uh, this webinar by, uh, by writing an email. Uh, just to start with, I would like to clarify the difference we have between project development assistance and integrated home renovation intervention services. Uh, actually, many of the things that you could be doing with integra integrated home renovation services could also be done uh, partly uh, with uh, PDA. Uh, the main differences, I would say, between the two topics are uh, concerning the scope of, uh, of the pro project. Uh, under PDA, you can cover quite a broad scope of activities, starting from public buildings, uh, social housing, residential housing, infrastructures, uh, meaning street lighting, wastewater. Uh, and in this case, uh, you should target only uh, the renovation of uh, the residential sector. So it's fully targeted to that. Uh, and also, one big difference between the two uh, topics is that uh, home renovation services is open uh, last year and this year, but it will not be open in 2020. So it's the last year that you can apply for this uh, topic. Uh, for the other one, you, for PDA, you can still apply also next year. Um, so why is there a home renovation uh, topic? Uh, on top of, uh, of PDA, uh, it's because we recognize that the uh, residential sector is more complex than um, maybe the public sector and there is a need for adapted uh, services and adapted approaches and adapted support from the EU in order to uh, trigger uh, refurbishment in this renovation, uh, in this uh, residential sector. Uh, this uh, sector is widely at atomized with uh, uh, building owners and uh, own their, their, their house and in most cases will lack 
the skills to uh, set up, implement, and, and finance, uh, especially if the project is uh, ambitious. Uh, there is very little incentive for uh, capacity buildings because um, capacity building because you may refurbish your home uh, maybe one time in your lifetime or maybe two, but not not much more and. Um, and so taking charge and, and, and improving your skills in all the different aspects of this refurbishment project uh, may be uh, too much for, uh, for an individual owner. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, the complexity will increase if you live in a condominium or if you have to deal with people facing energy poverty. Um, so we do an analogy with uh, wedding planners. Uh, a wedding would be uh, one single logically connected project. Uh, you, you see uh, as an individual so your wedding as a single project, but uh, you have to deal with a number of non-coordinated uh, actors. You have to deal with a caterer, with uh, uh, maybe a travel agency, maybe um, uh, I mean, many, many, many non-coordinated actor, even though for you it was supposed to be the same project. It can get pretty complex and there is uh, an actual added value in developing a coordinated uh, and coordinating uh, an integrated offer, making, making it as simple as possible uh, for, for you. Uh, and, and, and what we try to develop with uh, integrated home renovation services is to develop the kind of activity of wedding planner for refurbishment of, uh, of housing. So create uh, one-stop shops, uh, not necessarily from scratch. You can ex also expand uh, the services that are uh, currently uh, provided that expand and cover a wider range of the customer journey. Uh, you don't have to to reinvent everything. You can also copy and replicate uh, initiatives that exist elsewhere in uh, in Europe or even in your country. As I said, for PDA, uh, the innovation aspect is always considered and evaluated in the particular context proposal. So you have to clearly explain where is your starting point, and we can, um, in many cases, consider innovative so just a fact to uh, gather collecting offer and making sense out of it in order to make uh, uh, an offer that is as simple as possible for uh, for uh, uh, um, for building owners. Uh, the innovation can simply consist in uh, in connecting the dots if you want. You should consider uh, provision of finance. Uh, by that we do not necessarily mean that you should uh, develop a standalone uh, financing offer, but you could uh, consider uh, facilitating the access to existing subsidies, for example, and in any case facilitating the financial of the investments that you, that you are trying to trigger. So maybe by um, collecting the information on existing financial offer in your local market or even developing partnerships with uh, financial actors in order to facilitate the financing of the, of the action. Uh, there is the uh, same deadline as for PDA on the 3rd of uh, September. Uh, with a budget that is slightly higher, with 10 million uh, euros available this year. We expect proposal more or less of the same size as for PDA, meaning between uh, 0.5 to 1.5 million euro per, uh, per proposal. So there is room for quite a, a number of, of proposals under uh, home renovation uh, services. Obviously, these amounts are um, indicative, so you can propose a pro something with a different amount, but then you, you have to, and, and in any case, you have to clearly justify uh, what is your starting point, what are you trying to implement, and how your budget is, uh, is justified. Um, so I can just mention maybe because I would like to leave a little room for question and answer but uh, there is a, a, an inventory of best practices regarding one-stop shops for the re residential sector that was developed under the Innovate uh, project uh, which is I think quite, uh, quite interesting and can give you a number of uh, good ideas for your own uh, initiatives. I also mentioned the John Research Center uh, publication that um, uh, was published uh, late 
at the end of last year, and where you can find also quite uh, quite interesting uh, information. Um, in any case, and this also applies to PDA, uh, we need to find in your proposal a very adequate analysis of your market needs and the barrier you try to overcome. So where do you, uh, are you starting from? What are you trying to do? What already exists in your market? Uh, what are the actors that are active in your market, market? And how are you connecting the dots and making uh, a better and improved uh, offer uh, to, to homeowner to facilitate their uh, decision and investment in energy refurbishment. Uh, a clear and detailed concept is needed, so a good idea is not enough. Uh, you need to really answer the needs of your market actor, and so uh, also you need to explain to evaluators what are the market needs and how you assess them. Uh, engage market actors uh, at the proposal stage is certainly a plus or during the whole duration of the action. Uh, as I commented also in the PDA, what we need to see is that you can convincingly reach uh, the impact that you claim in your proposal. So how, how, um, how, how convincing are you in, uh, in your claims? In, uh, in the proposal and we need also to clearly understand what you are proposing and how is that uh, uh, interesting for uh, for answering the market uh, the market needs um, what what I should mention that um, and what is different in uh, integrated home innovation services compared to PDA is that uh, considering the complexity of the residential sector especially if you look at condominium we do not actually expect investment to be launch before the end of the action. What we do expect here uh, is uh, for the services to be developed and uh, operational by the end of the action, even if the, uh, the investment are um, triggered only after the action is completed. So it's quite a big difference between uh, PDA and home renovation. In this case, in uh, home renovation, you won't have uh, in your grant agreement the payback clause and, uh, and there is no requirement of uh, investment trigger per um, euros of technical assistance uh, uh, received. But still, we need to see that you can develop the services, uh, make them operational and start activities before the end of the action, and then that the investment can re reasonably re be reached and triggered uh, just after the action is, uh, is completed. There is a number of uh, information uh, in this last slide where you can find references to the topic descriptions, but also uh, a link to a dedicated webinar we uh, we, we recorded and put on uh, YouTube on uh, home renovation services, so a much longer presentation that, uh, than what I just presented. Uh, also, I mentioned the Sustainable Energy Investment Forums. Uh, there is a web page where you can find the links to all the events we have got organized uh, during the last three years under this uh, initiative. Uh, with the proceedings from all events, so you will have a, a number of examples, for example, uh, of, of uh, existing PDA, for example, uh, and uh, so you can find uh, what they are doing and uh, and certainly good information for your own initiatives, and a number of webinars, especially on home renovation, where you can also find food for thought and uh, in developing your proposal. And as I said, you can. Uh, always uh, send email to this uh, functional mailbox uh, if you have any question on the core requirement. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Christoph. Uh, I believe we, we, we inspired uh, uh, some, some colleagues and, and we gave uh, good information. Uh, do we have any, any, any quick and, and urgent question? You can take the floor when you want, or write on the chat box. Yeah, colleagues. Uh, we, we have one question uh, on the screen. Uh, would you like Christoph to, to, to try to answer that one? 
Uh, yeah, so I, I will uh, read it first. Uh, you say that uh, it is quite ambitious to the expected investment required from the private sector in building renovation to reach energy efficiency goals. So that is referring to the first table I've presented just at the beginning of my uh, first presentation. And then the rest of the question is how can this call assist the aggregation of renovation projects from condominium owner given the fragmented nature of this type of ownership and the huge impact that a successful business model will uh, entail. So either way, you can present it under uh, PDA and we do assist you uh, in uh, developing a project development unit that will uh, convince uh, condominium and, and building owners to 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 conduct the refurbishment. We do have the example of uh, Energy Positive in uh, Ile de France, uh, in France, that uh, followed this direction and uh, and uh, and uh, successfully uh, implemented uh, uh, renovation of condominium in in Ile de France. We do have a number of other examples uh, now uh, ongoing. Uh, in uh, Belgium, we do have uh, EasyCo Pro in the Brussels region, so also targeting condominium. We do have OC Invest in uh, Extremadura in Spain, also targeting condominium. So there are a number of examples for that, uh, but it is indeed a very complex um, sector, a sub-sector, let's say, uh, condominium. Um, and that's also why we, we ask uh, the project to to explain what they are doing and communicate on their results and approach so that possibly um, can help uh, other to, to trigger their own initiative and uh, learning from their starting point, uh, starting maybe a little bit more in advance, um, one step further, let's say, and, and possibly uh, reach success in, in this condominium sector. Obviously, home renovations, uh, topic is uh, also adequate for condominium, uh, maybe even more because there will not be um, this payback clause and, and, and it allows for mo taking more risks uh, addressing this, uh, this condominium sector. Thank you very much. Uh, there is an opportunity for the last question for today. Is there is anybody interested? <coughs> if if not, I, ha I have a question uh, for Christoph. Uh, uh, integrated home renovation service uh, 20, uh, 20, 20, uh, it, uh, 2019 is the last one. In twenty twenty, you will not have any more of this call. No, it's a, it's a last year to apply. So okay. if you have an idea. Uh, better uh, risk it this year in, uh, in September because next year it will be too late. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Christoph. Thank you very much, uh, Dominique and, and Feder and team. Uh, I hope uh, uh, colleagues uh, uh, participating in, in the webinar uh, received the information that they hoped to, to receive. Uh, it was it was a pleasure to organize this on such way. Although it would be better to see all of you live, but never mind. Uh, hope to see many of you soon uh, 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 at Federal and General Assembly. Uh, warm uh, and thank you very much, Christophe, for your participation and and sharing all the information. Uh, it, it was a pleasure to, to, to be today with all of you. And we finish for today, right? Right. Thank you very much to all. And uh, here you Thank you. Thank you, Roberta. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.